man these buttons morning everybody morning i'm gonna get the button stuff down uh we're working hard on it uh especially since i've got the uh new producer in the studio mike ball new i'm here man i mean it's black dragon and mike ball what the hell we're just trying to get down like every day uh internet problems and we do it live. We do it live. And button pushing problems and starting Frank, live. Frank says problems. that uh, I'm fashion. I like being fast be late, and I don't like it. I just seem like an addict to be stuck with it. But I'm recovering every day. I've been one day sober. <laughs> anyway. One day. Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News, Biker Views. You can use and choose to believe or not. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> rough it's it's it can't seems, win them all you can't win them all everybody get the, the thing over to the uh, until we can get it condensed and over in the stream yard right uh, we don't it's not it's not an easy button press thing but anyway <laughs> how do you like the new song that the midnight ghost Rider? i don't think he even knows it's awesome yet man what was that I don't think he even knows we're playing his song yet. I haven't seen him. Oh, on yeah, yet. we haven't seen him since we started it. Yeah, so he doesn't even know. It took. We'll see it. Now, he made this song for me months ago, and because he's internet challenged, uh, like many of us <laughs> my age, um, he had the hell of a time trying to send it to you, giving it to me. Right. So finally, <laughs> <laughs> finally, he got it sent uh, to my Facebook. <laughs> As a, nice. As um, and this is this is kind of hilarious the way that it came, but he sent it as a bunch of um, little you know Facebook uh, mm-hmm. files. Yeah. I don't even know what you'd call them. And MP3 I was files. able to uh, use <laughs> Facebook files. That's what you call them. And I was able to use um 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 
audacity yep. to, re to it. record it from inside the computer. So, hey, we got you it. Do, you do what you got to do. Afro you do engineering. You, you do what you got to do. That's hey, right. Mike, uh, big story today. What's um, that? Here, uh, if we go to screen two. Is it the, the one that we've got it titled? Yeah. Oh, it's the big one. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, man. Look at this. We only get four or five remaining uh, views. views. Oh, wow. Yeah. Listen, we got to get, I got to get a cookie manager or some sign, sorry. Where I totally. Can just so where it doesn't. They're tracking my computer. I don't it like it. It does this. track it. Yeah. They're inside my computer. How would you know I've been here one of five times unless you're tracking me? Of course they are. That's what I, cookies I mean, are for. Anybody who knows, please send me at blackdragonsgear.com the best Chrome cookie manager you you have so that I can blackdragonsgear.com? No. That's what you said. I said send to my email address, didn't I? What? You said blackdragonsgear.com. I didn't mean that. Send to my email address, blackdragon at blackseventhmc.com. Right. The best uh, cookie Which manager is right here. There is out there in the world. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, it's down on the bottom. Anyway, Tulum County Sheriff SWAT team assists with biker gang crackdown, they say. And here we have the famous picture the, 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 that they always show whenever they bust a motorcycle club. Yep. Exit so, out of that ad. Jeez Louise. There are... This is a lot of damn vests. They yeah, it is. One, two, three, uh, 20 or 30. Yeah, there's over 30. There's, no, there's over know. 30. Those over are all 30? HA pretty much, except for a couple of them. Oh, my goodness. This is my first time seeing this. Uh, it looks like they got some prospect vests. Mm -hmm. They got prospects. They got, uh, these are all California, it looks like. Yep, oh, it's, it, it was a bust here in California. Lee moly, Mike. Uh, yeah. And this is, these look like, uh, these are special ones, these um, red and white ones. I don't, I've not seen too many of these. Uh, and then they've got shotguns down here. Uh, this looks like your standard Colt uh, Sporter, Colt, 50, you know, AR-15. They've got pistols. Um, Jesus. Yeah. What's this thing on the front of this gun? Is that even legal in California? This little thing here? I can't even tell. Is that like a like if it's a silencer? Or, I can't really tell if you zoom in, maybe a little bit more. Oh my goodness! If it's a silencer, and then it's a silencer. <laughs> they got uh, shotguns and uh, all kinds of. Uh, these aren't whole guns here. These are just um, you know, what do you call those things? Receivers. These are just receivers. Uh, it doesn't look like particularly any Ill illegal gun. These are all regular shotguns, regular hunting rifles, uh, 38 caliber looking pistols. I don't really see anything that would be particularly illegal to have, but they got a lot of guns there. What? 30 guns, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, a handout photo from the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Department. Shows items confiscated on February 28th from an investigation into an outlaw motorcycle gang. And, of course, this is what they call the wall of shame. They stick these up either on the wall or on the floor, and you, you're supposed to see everything they've collected. Tulum County Sheriff's Squad personnel assisted the Stanislaus County Sheriff's investigators Wednesday who searched a rural property belonging to a current member of the California Nomads. And the search was related to a February 28th crackdown on the outlaw motorcycle gang activity in multiple counties, a sheriff's sergeant said Thursday. The property east of LaGrange between Don Pedro and McClure Reservoirs was in Tulum County, Sergeant T. Luke Schwartz with the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Officer Thursday. No shots were fired, no one was injured, and no arrests were made during the search. Well, why you got all their stuff then? Right. There's, there's going to be some questions here. Unspecified drug paraphernalia and gang indicia. And and we looked this up before. Indicia is, oh, here they say, items that demonstrate ongoing gang affiliation. That's oh. what, what indicia is. Indicia. If we said it right, <laughs> it could it's, be indicia. But, or, uh, or that way. But 
anyway, it's indicative. Maybe this is indicator. Maybe this is uh, the Latin base word of indicator. Uh, indicia indicates items that demonstrate ongoing gang affiliation. These items were seized. I, is is it? I mean, certainly they can take drug paraphernalia, although I don't see any drug paraphernalia up here. No, I don't see it either. Usually but, they, and if there was, you know that it would be in that picture. And yo, real quick, shout out to Wild Bill, man. Thank you for that donation, my man. Say I'm morning all good to be back among the living. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Amen. So, uh, um, so having this indicia, is this illegal to have? Because they sure took it all. Uh, anyway, um, let's get back here. So these items were seized. The location of the search was a Carmelita Lane, was on Carmelita Lane near uh, Avenida Central off Mer Merked Falls Road and close to the Tulum Stanislaus County line. It was the property of a current member of the California Nomads based in Sol uh, Salida between Ripon and Modesto, according to Tulum and Stanislaus Sheriff spokespersons. The law enforcement agency had a warrant for the search. Law enforcement used camera equipped robots or other remote control devices to assist in clearing and ensuring the safety of interior spaces during the search warrant. Kind of like they Oof. went into P. Diddy's house the other day with 45 armed officers. Ready, <laughs> in to, armed gear, to the teeth. Uh, in SWAT gear and masks yeah. and, and tanks on the man's $45,000 front driveway <laughs> you know what i mean hundred thousand dollar driveway uh and they beat open his his door you know his um big gate they crashed it open and you know hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of freaking damage when you could just ring the doorbell yeah, totally totally you're right about but that anyway they so here they used clearing robots uh, has the Hells Angels ever had like a shootout with the police department to like warrant this? Right. Like, like, have, like let's be they, real. Have they ever had like a real just like, you're not coming in here? Yeah, standoff. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. We need you to come to the door now. No, come Stop get us. Cap. <laughs> come on, Anna. We're going to, we're going to shoot the place down. Yeah, we're shooting it out with you right now. Load up, Fred and the boy. Like, has that ever happened? <laughs> has it? No, I don't think what, so. What, what Nothing that I know of. What justifies all this? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Coming in with robots and shit. 14, 12, 11, 9. Oh, shit! Shin, oh, shit. Shin robot 12 and robot 7. Rone 2 and 3. We paid for all this shit. We got to use it. Over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Might as well use it since we got it. They needed to assist in clearing. <laughs> Ridiculous. Whatever happened to... Everybody come out with your hands up. Whatever happened to that? Just do that. <laughs> Just do that. It's easier. And a oh. lot cheaper. <laughs> it's just... Law enforcement used camera-equipped robots or other remote control devices to assist in clearing and ensuring the safety of interior spaces for them during... The search. <laughs> oh, they said using technology available to us is designed to maximize our officer safety tactics and mitigate the likelihood of an armed co confrontation by having devices take a look before sending in our sworn personnel, Schwartz said. Mm -hmm. In other words, we paid for all these damn toys, and if we don't use them, they might take them away next budget cycle. We got to make a use case for it. Gotta make a use like I try to make a use case for all my out of your whole barn. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. They they gave you all this. I just never find a reason, like you know, to use it. Like I still haven't found a reason. That one's ridiculous. But I, I'm looking. <laughs> we'll continue. <laughs> they, yeah. Anyway, uh, Tulum's County SWAT Sheriff SWAT's involvement Wednesday was limited to ensuring scene safety so Stanislaus County investigators could complete their search warrant service. Search warrant service, they call it. Oh, what a wonderful service. It's almost like bottle service. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Can we get the search warrant service, please? You're right. Come we on, want send officers it. in bikinis, <laughs> thongs oh, with their asses high, <laughs> and shaking it as they come through. Ha! Huh! Anyway, uh, <laughs> Tulum, uh, <laughs> to this motherfucker. County it's investigators could complete their search warrant service. Tulum County's sheriff's investigator Ashley Bujukian said. Uh, the search Wednesday and the February 28th crackdown were part of what Schwartz described as an active and ongoing investigation. And if they put it in that category, they can do anything to you and not ever tell anybody about it because it's an active and ongoing investigation. How long can they say that for, too? You know, until forever. It's Infinite. no longer active you know, or ongoing. <laughs> you know, it just goes until they bust somebody. Like, that's so crazy. Uh, what is that down there in the corner there from Facebook. Ayibo Fani Mwen Yo Seven Moon Kigen Guaka. Come on. I wouldn't even try. English only, fool. Yeah. English only, fool. (laughs) Uh, What are we doing here? They used to have a translation button. They got rid of the translation button. I'm not paying attention to none of that crap. All right, moving on. Way more important shit. The February 28th crackdown resulted from a dispute among dozens of outlaw motorcycle gang members. Including rival Hells Angels, Stolita Nomads, and Mongol Street Gang members, which led to unspecified acts of violence last year. Detectives with the uh, Stanislaus Special Investigations Unit followed leads for several months and identified suspect suspects, locations, and other people believed to be involved in those 2023 acts of violence. Wow. Schwartz and his Department of Investigators declined to identify the property owner or provide more details to preserve the integrity of the leads and the case detective that the case detectives are still pursuing. Mm-hmm. As part always. of that active and ongoing investigation thing. Uh, with the help of the Federal Bureau of F- Investigation, the FBI, for those of you who didn't know, and neighboring local enforcement agencies in San uh, Joaquin, is that how you say that? And Tulum counties. Search warrants were obtained targeting multiple dangerous outlaw motorcycle gang members, the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office said in late February. A dozen tactical teams were involved in the February 28th operations, which included the raid of a Hells Angels storefront in Stockton. Tulum County Sheriff's Office personnel did not take part in the February 28th operations targeting outlaw motorcycle gang activity because of the deputy involved shooting. That occurred the night of February 27th in Groveland, uh, Detective Bazooka Kian said. Law enforcement on February 28th seized about 50 firearms, including shotguns and rifles, three dozen leather vests, many with Hells Angels emblems and other gang indicia, as well as unspecified quantities of gun silencers, bomb-making explosive materials, ammunition, narcotics, and other controlled substances, the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office said. Modesto uh, residents, Vincent Ball, 62, Anthony Vincent Sorora, 37, and a whole bunch of other people who we don't know, were among the most noteworthy arrests on February 28th, the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office said. Charges included, but were not limited to, felon in possession of a firearm and ammunition, steroid possession, possession of an assault weapon, possession of a silencer, manufacturing and selling metal, metal knuckles, you can't have metal knuckles in California. Brass we can have, them. We can no have them here, but possession of narcotics along with a loaded firearm, the Stanislaus County's office, Sheriff's Office said. The Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office also did not say how many other arrests were made February 28th or whether the Nomads member who owned the Tulum County property searched Wednesday was arrested himself. The agency said participating agencies in the crackdown in last month, uh, the crackdown last month included the FBI field offices, of San Francisco and Sacramento, police in Modesto, Ceres, uh, Tulak, Stockton, and uh, Manteca, the California Highway Patrol, and the Calaveras County Sheriff's Office. Among current 1% or outlaw motorcycle gangs existing in California, Hells Angels and Nomads are often aligned, and many simply call themselves Hells Angels Nomads. Hells Angels and Mongols generally do not get along since the 1970s, Back then, Hell's Angels were all white, while Mongols were 90% Hispanic. People still talk about the Laughlin River Run riot in Laughlin, Nevada in April 2002. They always got to bring that shit up. 
in which two Hells Angels and one Mongol member were killed. You like how they just throw other clubs like that in with this shit? It's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's how they do it. That's Motorcycle what they do. Clubs. Yeah, motorcycle clubs and motorcycle gangs in California and the rest of the nation date back to when people began building and buying motorcycles around 1900. That's not true. These freaking guys. Who is riding these, this shit? Motorcycle you know? clubs date back to the 1900s. There were no motorcycle gangs back in the 1900s. Wow. These freaking people. Wow. These freaking uh, people. By 1910, there were about 100 motorcycle manufacturers across the United States. That's true. Um, and it was motorcycle manufacturers that actually had a big boost in getting motorcycle clubs started. But uh, there were no motorcycle gangs back in 1900. <laughs> Play that stop the cap button. That yeah, stop the, stop the cap. Early fear, respect, and notoriety of the modern Hells Angels stems in part from their roots in the American 20th century. They were not the first motorcycle gang, but they remain among the most famous. By 1930, there was a Howard Hughes film about World War I fighter pilots called Hells Angels. By 1945, young WW2 veterans and others in inland Southern California had formed a motorcycle club called the uh, Pissed Off Bastards of Bloomington, west of the city of San Bernardino, and the Pissed Off Bastards of Burdue. The Pissed Off Bastards of Bloomington in July 1947, along with motorcycle clubs called the Booze Fighters and the Market Street Commandos, took part in a highly publicized three-day Hollister riot. That, that was not a riot. It was a party. You got to love how these media outlets put all this shit. It, it was a party that a, uh, was it a time, a life, a life uh, uh, photographer? Staged? Yeah, it was staged. All the bottles and all that. That was a staged photo. Yes. Anyway, they took part in the riot, <laughs> <laughs> which was hyped nationwide in the 1953 Marlon Brando film, The Wild One. It was actually called the Wild Ones. Ones, right. Motorcycle rally in Riverside in 1947 and 1948 also degenerated into drunken riots. Motorcycle rallies in Riverside degenerated into drunken riots, which led to the terms outlaws and one percenters. Ha! Huh. Uh, at least they didn't attribute that to the AMA like everybody always does. They always seem to do that when so, there's... So that was a little better. Uh, used by authorities, the term outlaws and one percenters used by authorities to describe less than legal motorcycles. Around 1950, some of the pissed off bastards formed the first Hells Angels chapter in San Bernardino. They took the name from their club from the AWW-2 B-17 F Flying Fortress Bomber Aircraft tail number 4124577, which was named Hells Angels after the 1930 Hughes movie, according to a Federal Office of Justice Program's Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs USA Overview, which dates to May 1991. Today's Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs are viewed as organizations whose members use their motorcycle clubs as fronts for criminal enterprises According to the U.S. Department of Justice Criminal Division, some gangs are highly structured criminal organizations whose members engage in violent crimes, weapons trafficking, and drug trafficking. There are more than 300 active outlaw motorcycle gangs in the United States, ranging in size from single chapters with five or six members to hundreds of chapters with thousands of members worldwide. Hells Angels, Mongols, Bandidos, Outlaws, and Sons of Silence pose a serious national domestic threat and conduct the majority of criminal activity linked to outlaw motorcycle gangs, especially activity relating to drug trafficking and more specifically to cross-border drug smuggling. But what is the what is the domestic threat? Like when I think of domestic threat, I think of like terrorism. actual terrorism. I think Whoa, of, uh, Cody. I think of, Saying happy Easter, uh, every group known to man has made mistakes. Sad they won't see the good motorcycle clubs do what they they won't see what the good motorcycle clubs do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Thank you I, for that, Cody. When I think of um 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 when I think of domestic threat, I think of like a 
Do you see crime as a domestic threat? Crime? Yeah, because no. they're they're saying because they they move drugs and stuff like that, they're a domestic threat. I, I just wonder because they just put uh, the last of was it four or six cops in prison for uh, going to these men's house, these black men's house over there uh, here in the south, and uh, beating them and shooting one guy's tongue out. Yes, I, I, I did see that. If, if they would be domestic terrorists too. Facts. For uh, real. I just wonder if we oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, if we could call some members of the police department domestic terrorists. Yep. Uh, but anyway, because of yeah. their transnational scope, the outlaw motorcycle gangs are able to coordinate drug smuggling operations in partnership with major international drug driving organizations. Anyone who wants to share information with the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office is urged to call the Stanislaus the Stanislaus County Area Crime Stoppers at 209-521-4636, 209-521-4636, or go to www.stancrimetips.org. Wow. What a freaking, what a freaking article. What a story. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a wild wow moment. That's a lot of freaking guns and vests seized, though, in a in a single raid. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. So we got another story on the back burner, though, and I thought it was kind of interesting because it was something that I've gotten to deal with. And also, by the way, I, I have to change the, uh, the, it's my fault. I, I don't know why it set, why I read it a certain way, but also the outlaws is titled in this. They're not supposed to be in here right now. So it's only a hell's angel story. We'll change it after the show. All right. So next story, Just we have something sure that we, uh, that, that we absolutely retract that. Don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. just in the title. It's just going to be changed. It's not even in the thumbnail or anything. So All anyways, right, on. Uh, what, what's the next story? The next story I sent you is an interesting story of that just happened uh, about, I don't know, I want to say about 10 hours ago, 11 hours ago. And it was a person that got, unfortunately, um, a biker who had his leg amputated from a, an accident. And the way that he deals with it is a little interesting. Uh Okay. It's it's uh, sent to you. Oh. Uh, oh. You 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 are already before the show. You said oh, you yeah, had pulled it up. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Here it is. Thank you thank you thank you. There it is. Oh. Did you exit that. out of it now? I I did. Oh, hold on. I gotta just. Go I hate quickly. that. I I hate that too. Jesus. <laughs> wrong button. Here we, we do go. it live, y'all. All right. Uh, let me pull it over here. There we go. You got it. All right. Biker who lost leg after being hit by a careless driver says his life has been ruined. Brian Woodley, who created, who was uh, Brian Woodley, who crashed into his birthday. Uh, Brian Woodley, who crashed into his birthday, was unable to see his terminally ill brother before he died. That does that make sense? Yeah, grammatically, does that make sense? Brian Woodley, who crashed into. On his oh, birthday. Who, okay, I'm not reading right. He, yeah, your, your, right. your reading, vision right. messed up about six times on you. Brian Woodley, who was crashed into on his birthday, yes. was unable to see his terminally ill brother before he died. There we go. Brian Woodley, better known as Bert. A motorcyclist whose leg had to be amputated as a result of a careless driver who collided with him said his life has been ruined. Rebecca Jennings failed to see him while taking a right turn. Oh, a right turn and sent him flying through the air. And so he, that's our that's our left turn because they're in the UK. This is almost your story. Yeah, that is our left turn, isn't it? That's our left turn. Uh, this is almost your story, huh? It's the 20, almost 29 verbatim. year old drove her silver Vauxhall Astra into Brian Woodley's Yamaha 900 on the A4046 in. 
Ebbuville on December 8, 2022. It resulted in a catastrophic consequences. Well, I'm just adding words in today. It resulted in <laughs> catastrophic consequences for Mr. Woodley, whose right leg was amputated below the knee as a result of the injuries he sustained. A sentencing hearing at Cardiff Crown Court on Thursday heard the victim was traveling towards Mether Tideful when he saw a car traveling in the opposite direction, which appeared to be entering his lane. It made contact with Mr. Woodley's leg, causing him to catapult into the air before landing in brambles on a grass verge. Not sure what a grass verge is, but uh, there you go. Uh, Oh, easy said a right turn is a right turn, guys. <laughs> Not, uh, you got to think of the way the, that they're driving. If you're on the right, if you're on the left-hand side of the freeway, a right turn crosses opposing traffic. Yeah. So it's like our, it's like, it's the same effect as our left turn. Is Come on, guys. Turn. We understand a right turn is a fucking right turn. Don't be retarded. Mike. <laughs> I can't stand retarded Mike, comments. Mike. Mike. <laughs> That's why I just left it alone. To our subscriber, please. No. Be, be nice to the subscribers? No. Yes. A witness who described the collision said Jennings' vehicle was making a right turn into Garden City when she collided with the motorbike, causing Mr. Woodley to be thrown into the air. He and another man went to Mr. Woodley's aid as Jennings got out of the car and turned the motorbike engine off. Thumbs up, homie. Easy, easy, easy jumping in your ass over there. It's not retarded. It's logic, mother effer. I, I hear you, man. <laughs> cool. But you don't only... understand my analogy, then fuck off. <laughs> Crazy. Mike, stop that. Oh, you stop it. <laughs> you did it to yourself. <laughs> He, Mr. Woodley, <laughs> I, you're messing up my story. Mr. Wood, this is your story. You're messing up your story. Mr. Woodley was taken to the University Hospital of Wales in Cardiff and was treated for injuries to his right leg. Prosecutor Emma Harris said he also suffered fractured ribs as well as injuries to his liver and spleen. A forensic his liver and, and spleen too. And spleen. Damn, he has organ problems from it, huh? Uh, a forensic collision, uh, a forensic collision investigator colluded, <laughs> concluded that Jennings had cut a corner as the motorbike was approaching and she should have been able to see Mr. Woodley's motorbike helmet before turning right. Huh. Do we look for motorbike helmets? Uh, in her interview, Jennings said she had stopped, let two vehicles pass, looked again before making the maneuver. And uh, obviously that didn't work. Look at how they spell maneuver. That's really crazy. M A N O E. Yeah, they add. Yeah. No, we we take away. Remember, it was we, we take away their U's, right? Yeah. She really she realized with no Z. She realized <laughs> she had hit a bike, but could not see the rider. The defendant told police, "I know it was my fault. I don't know what went wrong." Wow. Anyway, the guy lost his leg. Here's another picture of him sitting there having a cold one. Uh, Jennings of, and let me tell you, when you're this old and you lose your leg, it's not like you can hop on these badass knees. You can hang that up, Mike. You can't. No, you don't bro. think you can hop around on one leg? Not, not with these knees. And Damn. then all the weight be tra all this weight be transferred to just one bad knee. You don't think you can do it? Uh, no, I, I think that uh, I would have to lose a hundred pounds, <laughs> possibly, to to hop around like that. Uh. And the reason I know is I have gout, and sometimes you have a gout attack, it takes out one leg. Oh, man, if you did not. get gout, that would suck. And so now you have one le only one leg left. So I've had to do the crutches thing and all that, and it's it's quite difficult. Crutches and suck. I weighed almost 100 pounds less than I weigh now when that happened. Uh, wow. In a victim personnel statement, okay, Jennings of Colburn, Later pleaded guilty. So she pleaded guilty to causing a serious injury by careless or inconsiderate driving. The court heard she was a previous good character before the bad character of knocking this guy off his motorcycle and taking his leg. In a victim personnel statement read to the court, Mr. Woodley said the collision had happened on his birthday. He also described how he was unable 
to see his terminally ill brother before he died as a result of him being unable to travel due to his injuries. He said, I'm getting slowly more depressed and I can't move on in life every day. Things take longer to do and I have to think about things before I do them. Uh, yeah, the victim said he had undergone a number of operations to repair his femur and as a result of infections and his left leg frequently swells up due to added pressure. The same kind of sores you get, Mike. Yep. This guy can use brown dog as a service dog. Yeah, but he's in the UK. Yep. He's way too far. Yeah. I and mean, he could use brown dog as a service dog, but I have to make sure that brown dog is fed correctly. Uh, he said, I'm getting slowly depressed. Yes, I know you are. Mr. Woodley added, I feel like a prisoner in my own home. The incident has ruined the rest of my life. Damn it. Damn. I was looking forward to retirement in a few years' time, but my whole outlook on life and what I can do has changed me. Mike, you need to call this guy. The yeah, for real. was a big part of my life, and my intention was to ride around the UK. You still can, and parts of Europe, but I... Don't know if that will happen. I used to be hands-on, but I have to think about what I do. Nothing is simple anymore. So let me tell you what he means when he says he has to think about what he's done. Because I got really sick in 2023. I mean, really, really ill. Like violent. Um, so my kidneys basically stopped functioning. Um, I had um, heart failure. Um, you had all this happen? Yeah, 2023. Yeah. Um, my legs swole up as a result of the heart failure. Uh, and I had incredible, um, I mean incredible, uh, what do you call it, uh, arthritis mm -hmm. in my legs to the point that I, I walked on two canes. I, I, I literally walked on two canes. Mm. And um, very challenging because I had a... Uh, I had a Malinois and a Jack Russell Terrier, and those dogs need to walk about three to five miles every day. Mm. And so I would have to just let the dogs off the leash and let them run the place where the coyotes almost got them. Because right? you could barely Because walk. I could barely move. And what he says when he says you have to think about... So, so the... And I went to uh, the PRO, the PROC convention. Yes, you did. And if it were not for the love the bikers had for me, they damn near carried me around a lot during that. Play. And I and there were some some brothers and some clubs. In 2023 or 2024? Yeah, 2023. Oh, okay. Um, and they 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 carried my books. I had cases of books. And, and they helped you carry all that? Find his club and his prospects to taking my books upstairs and putting them and, and taking them downstairs. And they brought me food and That's they awesome. took care of me. You understand? Because I yeah. was too damn sick. Damn. And I was on two canes. I had my service dog. And those people at the proc treated me so with so much dignity. They bought my books and stuff, but they took care of me. But when, when he's talking about you have to think about, he's saying, you know, you have to think about moving. So to get up, you just stand up, even with your, your leg. Now, you might understand what I'm talking about, because for a while, your leg was, you had to learn how to walk again. So mm -hmm. to, to th when you have to think about, so I had to plan getting up. Like, how am yes. I going to get up? I never, I never could just stand up. I had to plan it. Like, okay. I, and then, and then I would be at a point where I would have to think five or six times before I actually could make do the it. Maneuver to do it. Yes. And I had to, uh, I had to put my focus on um, how do I, how do I move? How do I get up? How do I? This was, this was just incredible. So when he says. You know, my whole life. And so for me, yeah. my whole life was 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 destroyed. Like I'm thinking that it's oh, over. I'm gonna die any any second now. Wow. And then my my daughter's mother died um in twenty twenty two. And she was just uh a couple years older than me. She was like fifty eight or something. And she just fell over dead from the same kind of complications, uh, diabetes and all this, that, and the other. Right. So, so like, uh, when I saw her die, 
It was kind of like, gee, well, maybe you're next. And my own mom died at 58 or 54. My grandmother at 56. My dad yeah, at 58. It's everything in like the 50s for you. Yeah. And, and I was, you know, I was right there. So I understand what he says. He's depressed. His life has changed. He's got to think about how well, he, he said moved. his life is ruined. His life is yeah ruined. Um, and uh, he, he, the motorbike was a big part of his life for me in 2022. I, I didn't know if I'd ever be able to ride again, to be honest with you. My last ride, my last cross country ride back to the mother chapter mm -hmm. was so painful. Oh, I bet. I, I bet. Do you know how I got on and off my motorcycle? You know how you swing your leg over? That that was impossible. That that yep. that so you you know what you have to do? You have to stand on the pegs and step over. Mm -hmm. Instead of standing on the ground and swinging your leg over, you gotta stand you gotta on get the that peg. next level to get your leg over. And and then you don't swing your leg over because you, you can't your, you pick your knee up to your chest and you step over. Go as high over as you can, yeah. Yeah. And then your foot catches on the seat and you almost fall off. Hurts. And you gotta work your yeah. So this is this is what happens when you get old. Or if you get old and you lose your leg. Right. It can be horrible. I can't even imagine. Well, you've made that comment a couple of times. You're like, yeah, you know, with you your situation, you're young. You you're like, if it happened to me, then I don't know. If I would just be getting on up and just starting doing shit, you know, I understand. The 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 comeback is going to be longer and harder. It's harder, kind of like right. if I if I get it's on working the, against you. If I get out on the football field and I I play today, tomorrow you get up and go run and jog or whatever it is you're going to do. Me, I'm in bed for the next two days <laughs> with some being gay or something. Uh, anyway, he says he feels like a prisoner in his own home. I felt that before. The incident has ruined the rest of his life. Uh, he said he's describing, he described having a prosthetic leg as feeling really weird. And he doesn't know when he will be able to walk fully again. The victim said he recognizes he will no longer be able to work and no longer be, have a social life. Uh, he needs you no to talk to him. No longer have a social life. He needs you to talk to him. This guy is seriously. Man, depressed. he's in his head. He, he's, yeah. he's definitely allowed that to get to him. Damn. I well, mean, I understand. I understand why it could take that route. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, Mike, if there's any I, contact info, information on that guy, I, I'll totally reach out. Mike, I only lost a piece of my thumb mm -hmm. and I, I went into deep depression. Yeah. Yeah, you did. And, yep. and uh, just a piece of it. Just imagine some people don't bounce out like you have in mitigation. Jeffrey Jones said his client Jennings was heartbroken about what had happened to Mr. Woodley and accepts nothing can be done to rem remedy the injuries he has suffered. The barrister said the defendant had worked in nursing care and provided support to her mother and her son who had mental health difficulties. Sentencing judge Shoman Khan said, you and you alone, uh-oh, <laughs> you and you alone are to blame for the collision. The injuries to Mr. Damn. Woodley are life-changing. It looks like he's about to slam her butt. Mm -hmm. Jennings was sentenced to four months imprisonment, suspended for 12 months. Wow. He was also ordered to carry out 100 hours of unpaid work to pay the cost of 500 pounds and disqualified from driving for 12 months. What What does that mean, suspended for 12 months? That you you go yeah. after 12 months or you don't go at all? I think that... They just suspend your your license for a year. You know, I think that's basically what all she was getting at is you can't drive. Poor lady. Uh, she's she's uh well she didn't do as bad as as you would think. Not as bad as one might think. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough, huh? Yeah, that's rough. I I hope I can get that guy's contact information. Uh, Brian Woodley, uh, over in, uh, uh, the, the, uh, it's, it's, it's on here somewhere where he was. Maybe we can find him. You got to give him a call, Mike. I totally would. If, if I can get a hold of him, I'll, I'll absolutely contact him. You know, I told you when I lost my, the piece of my thumb on the scene, I told you this yesterday, one of the things that made it 
instantly better for me was the fireman had lost his thumb too. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he yelled at me, oh, man, you're going to be just fine. I, look, they half of my thumb's gone too. You know, I had that in my life too. When that happened, I had a, an amputee that rode motorcycles reach out to me, you know, and that one reach out, it, it made me realize in the hospital, like, all right, I know for a damn fact, if, if someone else has done it, I know I can do it, you know? Um, and that's really how it goes, you know, having someone to look up to as like a, a semi mentor or, or, Someone that is, you know, you see that, that they've gone through it and they've, they've done it, that you can too. They just don't know the possibilities until they actually are confronted with it and push themselves to the limit. But you have to mentally accept that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, anyway. That's a good idea, Big Drift. Absolutely. I'm going to contact them. Man, that's a. What the lady says? I just don't know what happened. I looked. I yeah. I don't think Dwayne. I don't think he was in a club. I don't think he was in a club. I think he's an independent. That's Crazy, huh? Meant. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. not. That's not what I want to see. I want to see people be able to come back from from shit like this. You know, obviously. That's what I'm all about is showing that you can conquer this shit and move on. And so hopefully we can, we can talk to them. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what you got down there? Uh, this is a crazy one where this mother comes out and finds this guy, uh, kidding, kidnapping her 18 year old daughter. And um, I was uh, looking for the YouTube version of it. Uh, the YouTube version is censored or something? No, the YouTube version has more of the story. Oh, interesting. Uh, You'll probably be able to find it. Daughter's attempted kidnapping. And this just happened? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was... Uh, the YouTube version of it is um, really, really crazy. Uh, is this it? Let me see real quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Joseph P. Diddy music made him do it. That's hilarious. Here it is. So this is uh, this is the the YouTube version. It's uh, <laughs> really kind of wild. Watch this. Here we go. Terrifying moments, all captured on camera. A teen entering her queen's apartment is ambushed by a masked man. Oh, shit. Watch again. A man dressed in camo, jumping her from behind, forcefully grabbing the teen and dragging her away. The woman chasing after her is her mother, Adriana Alvarez. I never heard her scream like that. You weren't thinking about your safety at that point. No. No, absolutely not. No. No, it's my baby. Can't take her. Adriana followed as the man continued to drag her daughter away. The three kicking and fighting all the way down four flights of stairs. The harrowing ordeal unfolding this past January as her 18-year-old daughter Lex was coming back home after finishing a morning dog walk. He managed to grab my hair through the door. I remember being thrown onto the, the heater. The NYPD identified the suspect as 25-year-old George Vassilou her daughter's former co-worker. He pled not guilty to a slew of charges related to the attack. Tonight, his attorney not commenting. He's just Jesus. spraying me. He's punching me. The brawl reaching John Velez's first floor apartment. I heard her screaming. She ran to my apartment. I started chasing him. He, he ran across the street. And her neighbor, Gus Bugas, who ran after him. And I threw him on the floor. And once I got on top of him, he couldn't go nowhere. Alvarez says she suffered a dislocated shoulder, an eye injury. Damn. Sustaining minor knee scrapes. Price of a mom putting herself in harm's way. Coming up a hero. Yeah, I just had angels by my side. I'm just so grateful and so thankful just to have her back. George Solis, NBC News, New York. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Big drift. Shout out. Don't, 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 Thank you for the uh, for the super chat, man. Thank Appreciate you, that. Thank you. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, that was crazy, Joseph. Can you can you imagine? I mean, first of all, mom reminds me a whole lot of Lisa, Lisa Monet, mm. right? Lilacoy Moon, uh, Lil, Lilacoy Moon is what she calls herself. Moon. Now. Lilacoy Moon. Yeah. If you call her Lisa Monet, she'll she get might, pissed. Yeah, she she's not even going to answer you. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I I got to make a movie with her, Biker Boys. That's cool. And, uh, yeah, you don't call her Lisa. Monet. Yeah. All right. Now, at least back then, 20 years ago, she might be back to Lisa now. I don't know. You know, people do that. Joseph, uh, 100%. Major, he needs to, ain't no punk award. You know what? That's a fact. We need to do this, Mike. We need to do this in two ways. There there needs to be the ain't no punk award. And, the and ain't then no, the awards. And the ain't no punk t-shirt. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Right. The ain't no punk awards and the ain't no punk award t-shirt. So we, like we save the Ain't No Punk Awards for once a year, and uh, we gather everyone together that gets an Ain't No Punk Award. I didn't get and, them a shirt. And but between then, before that, they get the Ain't No Punk T-shirt. Nice. Black Dragon Biker TV Ain't No Punk Award T-shirt. Uh, is it Bonet? Not Monet. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> okay, Lisa Bonet. Uh, it's Lilacoy Moon, dude. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> how about we just that? said don't speak about that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what a what a freaking string of stories this morning. Yeah. This is yeah. radical. Yeah, that that stuff was crazy. Hey, you know Rudy Giuliani is about to lose his Florida condo. Oh man, what's going on? Well, <laughs> They're trying to make him sell it. So oh he's got God. he's got all these people that he owes money to, tens of millions of dollars. Okay, now Rudy Giuliani had a hundred eight million dollars at one time, a hundred eight million big ones, bro. That's a lot of money. And uh, his wife took a substantial piece of like that. Half? Which, yeah, which, well, probably like half, yeah. maybe even more than half. Then he had to play, pay, probably pay her attorneys and. He still pays. Do they have her. kids? Uh, yes. So then there's going to be the child support. I, think, I, 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 well, I don't know that for sure. I don't know if he had kids, but I know that he pays some alimony for her mother, too. Right. You're going to pay alimony. You're going to pay a whole bunch of shit. But he, he pays like five thousand a month for the mother, for her mother too, and five grand a month for her mother. Who just died, so I don't think he's going to have to pay that anymore. Wow. But, um, what they're saying is you own two houses. You own a house in New York, which he had valued at about six point some million dollars, and they devalued his house by over a million dollars. Holy they said, shit. Oh, they said, no, you want too much for that. No, it's not even worth that. It's only worth five and a half million or something like that. And then... So Oh, okay. That's and then, uh, so he's got a house down there in Florida worth like something like maybe three million or something. That's and so they want him to sell the house in Florida. Who's they? His creditors. There's a his creditors are represented by a creditor union thing. Union, yeah, and they have the attorney. They got them all together, and so they're trying to ask a court to force him to sell that home. Do you think it's going to happen? It could. It uh, could. But he said, I'm already trying to sell my my main property in New York, the one that's worth, you know, the most money. I'm trying to sell that now. So if you force me to sell my condo, what what you want me to be homeless? Mm -hmm. Some people, if they owe money, they tend to hide it. Uh, yeah, he, they, he's not able to hide his money unless he's got some in a briefcase somewhere. Well, I mean, or unless he's got some cash in a safe and that's what you're supposed to have. My bro. Cash, cash you're is king. To, you're supposed to have you some cash in a safe somewhere mm -hmm. buried into the ground. Like they found, uh, down in, uh, uh, Columbia, Columbia, you know, that, uh, one drug dealer dude, uh, the one that they caught on the roof. Oh, you're talking about, um, Pablo Escobar. Yeah. They, 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 somebody bought his old estate and they mm -hmm. dug up, a big ass safe. They Crazy. Never told us what was in it though? But anyway, dude, you know that whoever found that safe made off with it. 
Uh, well, the the owner, the new the owner. owner. Of the yeah. yeah, I mean that's probably why I would buy the property too, because you know there's something on that property. You know well, what I mean? He found the something, whatever that. Absolutely, he did that on purpose. Safe, you know, might could have been some heads in there, but. He probably looked at it as an investment. I'll buy this place because I know I'll find some treasure here, you know? And and treasure, he, he found he found a safe, at That's least crazy. a safe. Yeah. So anyway, this Rudy guy, um, poor fellow, is um, uh, he says, if you make me sell that property, uh, you'll make me homeless. Uh, but that home is valued in Palm Beach at $3.5 million. That makes it his second most valuable uh, reported asset. His apartment that he's trying to sell in New York is listed at six point five million, but it has since been, te been taken off the market with its bankruptcy court uh, filing slashed it by nearly a million dollars. Jeez. So anyway, he's got one point. He's got you know about nine million dollars in properties, and they're trying to make him divest it all. A lot of money in property. Yeah, but he's like, where am I going to have to live? So right. the question is, do you get to live in a $3 million house when you owe all them people all that money? Here's the other question. Like, they can take your house? I thought no one could make you homeless. In the government, the government, they can do anything they want. I mean, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? Yeah. Is um, the government, if you think you own anything, you know, the government has the ultimate. They can take away your land, your property, your cars, your shit. All for what? You know what I mean? Absolutely. They have all control like that. Somebody said Pablo lost 10% of his cash to rats when he was uh, alive. I read I read this in his brother's book. Because they can't do anything with that cash, so it just sits around. There's nothing I you can do with it. I saw a movie about that one time where this guy had all this cash in underneath his house. And then there were rats all in his cash. Wow. Um, um, but anyway. Imagine. Uh, Bill Siegel says the only reason these goons are going after him is he was one of uh, the biggest Trump supporters. Hmm. Didn't know that. Um, well, what they got him for was not supportancy, which is not illegal. They got him. The biggest thing they got him for was that one woman who... Uh, Filed for defamation of character. Uh, he yep, filed facts, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Government will take your your stuff plus interest. <laughs> Amen. They they ordered him to pay a hundred and forty eight million dollars to two Georgia election workers that he defamed. A mm. hundred forty eight million dollars now here's the thing this is what i said the, this is what i said in the trump case um I, i'm not saying that you shouldn't get a lot of money if somebody defames you but the question is if you were not worth 148 million dollars before you got defamed how are you worth 148 million dollars after you got defamed mm -hmm. you weren't worth that before right how can like, you sue for more than what you're worth? Than you've ever made or you'll ever make ever. Or ever see, ever. Or ever see. Let's like, be real. Uh, three, four, five million dollars, but $148 million yeah. from a guy who I, I had read I'd only made $108 million. Mm -hmm. how, can uh, you, how can you get more than what you're worth? BNC is actually talking about real rats, I believe, not not human rats. I think he's talking about real rats that come in and and eat your money up because it's just cash underneath your house. It's just sitting. Just sitting. Anyway, uh, that's what's happening. So I don't know if they're going to make him sell his house. One house he's selling on purpose, like he wants to get rid of the New York house. And then he had retired, you know, so I'm going to retire in Palm Beach. In a $3.5 million house. So when you call these people broke, Mike. Broke is only cash broke. Broke is relative. Everything is relative. Come they're on, man. Broke they're broke, ain't you and me's broke. No, no, no. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Not the cat. They have a different, they'll never be actually homeless. No, they, they you know what I mean? Mike Tyson broke for a while. Hell, right. he's broke. I'll take his broke. I'll take his broke. broke. Every single time. Day of the week. Yep. 
I would love to be broke in their regard. I, I take you Rudy Giuliani's broke. Okay, so he's broke. He says he can't pay a bill. He's only got like a hundred dollars in the bank and a three point five million dollar house and a six point oh, six million oh, dollar house. He's broke with nine million dollars worth of houses. <laughs> Which is what's sad is it's cheaper to plead guilty than to fight for your innocence. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it must be nice being that kind of broke. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. Now, there are people in line to get it all, but as I understand it, they can't take it all. I saw it, Biker News Canada. Appreciate you. No, it looked great. I used you guys on my green screen yesterday. But yeah, it was a good story about you both and mentioning me along. Uh, mentoring. And mentoring me. Thank you. Uh, Ellen R. What does that mean? Love and respect. Love yes. and respect. Trump always says he's a billionaire in public. So he said he had $10 billion when I first met him. When we all first met him, when he was running for 2016 election, he said he had $10 billion. Now he he might actually have $10 billion. His truth social is getting ready really? to go public. Yeah. Wow. And when the truth social goes public, he's going to throw Letitia James's five and a half, uh, half a billion. He's going to throw it at the court. Mm. Here you guys go. I got 20 now. 20. Take this and shove it. Must be nice. What I, I mean, that's what's a, I, Yep. Uh, I'm not on any of these guys' sides or anything. I'm just saying, can they really take your house? Yeah, bro. I bro, think they your can. House, bro, where you're living. We're getting less and less, um, you know, for <coughs> ownership. Yeah, it's an illusion. I'm just saying, can they can they take your house, man? Yep. That is uh, um, crazy. Here's something crazy in Nigeria. Okay. You want to go to Nigeria for yeah, a Yeah, let's, let's go around the world, y'all. I used it. to live in Nigeria, okay? And Nigeria. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I used to Get live out in, of town. For real? To, Stop yeah, the cap. I, I'm not capping. I used to live in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Wow. Yeah. In 1981. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a beautiful city, uh, uh, a uh, port city. Um, palm trees and stuff like that. Holy shit, Big Drift. I didn't know that. I've had three houses taken away from me uh, by the government? I hope not. Yeah. Anyway, when I first got to Africa in not the 1980s, when I was in Nigeria specifically, uh, you'd drive down the road and you would see these signs. And these signs were really kind of interesting if you weren't from Nigeria. Sure. Uh, they'd be big billboards, and what they would they say? say, "Stop! Don't lynch! Call the police!" And you drive by, and you look at that, and you say, "Huh? You mean they're lynching people? Mm -hmm. So much so that they got to put a stop, don't lynch sign up all over the city." They had television commercials: "Stop! Don't lynch! Call the yeah. police!" Television commercials. Look at that. Big Drift says yes by the government. Oh, Big Drift. I'm sorry, man. Three that... homes. Uh, but Damn. he's a badass. He had a home taken and got another one. Had a home taken and got another one. Had a home taken and still got another one. And continue down the line. They can't take his homes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Epic. Dump the Monko. Monko. Uh, so anyway... Uh, it's a tough place to be. Uh, you know, you can you can find yourself. Uh, there was this one guy who, this uh, white American couple, they drove through a uh, a village and ran over a little boy, and they got their asses lynched on the spot. Oh shit! Yeah, they don't play over there. Yeah, they're not they're not joking. They're not playing with you. So this story reminded me of being there, which is one of the. Listen, man, if I go back to Nigeria, I go back in a heartbeat. Um, Really? It, it, yeah, it is so cool. It's a cool to be place. There. Yeah, yeah. I love being. I loved every second of being there. The culture, or just the, the, the culture, area, the and and the people, and and then if you're black and you're from America, and then you're never, like a king. You've never seen African people before. You might not know that you're from Africa. Mm -hmm. You might be like, oh yeah, that's what they say. Well, whatever. But when you go back there, you see people. 
that you swear to God you know. Uncle Henry? Epifumawomo? Oh, shoot. No, you just look just like him. Like, like, you know you're from there because everybody looks like you. Everybody talks like you. Everybody acts like you. You know, wow. our brothers can be animated and stuff like that. And, totally. And, yeah, uh, that's the way they are there, too. You know your home. You know yeah. your you know you where you come from. So what ends up happening in Nigeria on this story? Oh man, this story reminded me of being there. A pregnant mother faces seven years in prison for an online review of tomato puree product. What? So yeah, she is a, a pregnant woman. She's facing seven years behind bars for slamming tomato puree on Facebook. Her name is what? Chioma. Yeah, her name is Chioma Okoli. 39, she's a businesswoman from Lagos, which I've been to Lagos. It's a beautiful heart. It's it's the capital of uh, Nigeria, I believe. Uh, she's facing criminal prosecution and being sued after she said a renowned brand of canned tomato puree was too sweet. Get out of town. I'm what is going you. on? Uh, so you want to return back to that? Uh, well, I never... You saw, when, you, when you're there, you know what the rules are. It's like going to communist Russia. You know what the rules are. I, I wouldn't have known that if you I went to Nigeria and I, want, uh, yeah, I was like, "Hey, this tomato, are. this tomato you, paste sucks." No, I didn't know I'd die. No, boy, don't do or that. Or go to a freaking prison. Mike, Mike, Crazy. don't do that. Don't do that. Keep your mouth. Hey, when you're not from some place, America. you just shut We're up. In America, right? Yeah, when you're not from some place, you just shut up. Yep, that's true. <laughs> it reminds me when me and Jody Lee Brenner got into a fight down in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, we got in a fight with some uh, some of the hookers down there. We were oh, in a no. place of ill repute, and uh, these hookers would they would come and they would dance in front of us, and the girls would get all around us in the table, and we got a girl on each arm, and the girls are rubbing your leg, and you know what they're doing? They're rubbing your pocket so hard that they're rubbing your wallet out of your oh, pocket. Wow! Or they're rubbing your. <laughs> Or they're rubbing your money out of your pocket. Out of your pocket. You think yep. they're rubbing your leg. They're because rubbing they're, your money. Yeah. Out there. I, I I was just so getting rubbed on my legs. I was just like, oh, my God. You're no, like, this oh, leg, man, I mean, that, they love this, it. This, yeah. this leg rubbing thing is something else. And what they're doing is they're rubbing your money out of your pocket. So Jody Lee catches one rubbing his money out of his pocket. And the money was laying right there. Uh uh, so uh, when the girl rubbed my money out the first time, I had like the a first 10. time. It I had happened like, more than once. Yeah, well, because listen, it was the same girl. I had like a ten or something, and she rubbed it out of my pocket, and it fell on the seat between us. And she said, "Hey, your money fell out of your pocket." I said, "Oh!" So I pushed the money back in the pocket. Now I trusted her. Oh man! Yeah, and this next time she rubbed it, uh, she took everything. <laughs> Yo. You totally got this, scammed. This happened. Oh, so it just went right over, right over your head. Was from from down in Texas. He was a, a white guy that that uh, I was in boot camp with. We we started out as enemies. We became friends. Um, um. So uh, we started off as, as enemies because when I kept going to bed at night, he kept looking at my ass, and I was like, "What are you looking at my ass for?" And he said, "I just want to see the tail." What? Said, you, you just want to see what? I just want to see the Not tail. The I said, "What tail?" Oh, well, my granddaddy told me black people grow tails when they, when they go to sleep at night. I just want to see it. And I, so you know, we started off. <laughs> what fighting. in the hell? There is, is going no tail. On? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, I came in the. It was a bunch of stuff going on back then. So I can't even believe this. So, but we became friends. We became best friends. And so we, we would go everywhere together. You know, after we fought and everything, we became friends. There's mutual respect was. And so Jody Lee became like my best friend. So we're out in this bar, uh, enjoying all the dancers and the strippers and the, and the, and the hookers and stuff were, were around us. And we were holding on to them and all the stuff you do when you're a young sailor out there. And Jody Lee catches this girl stealing from him. So Jody Lee pops her ass in the eye. Pow, just like that. Takes his money back. Oh next shit. Next thing you know, we next thing you know, we got these Mexican bodyguard dudes, whatever you want to call them, bouncers, everywhere. Yep, now There's you're fucked. Ten or fifteen of us, and we're swinging and punching 
running and punching. So you, you, you're on Revolution Avenue and you're trying to get back to the border. It's a two and a half mile sprint, which you can sprint when you were our age. Uh, but the police got us and they took us down to the police station. Right. Uh, and uh, when we got to the police station, Jody Lee and another guy sprout off. We want our phone call. And uh, and got whooped. Yeah, you're not going to get no phone call that way. They got you're not whooped. in America. And you know what I know? Or know what I said to myself? Ha, huh, this ain't America. I'm going to shut the F up. Yep. No one to speak and not. I zipped it. <laughs> We had to pay to get out of that. But anyway, absolutely. I, I say that, Mike, when you're in somebody else's country, you know what you do? Well, it took you only 20 minutes to get to it, but gotcha. Hey, man, it only takes 20 minutes to get to it. <laughs> but it could take you 20 years to get out of it. But anyway, over here, Chioma Okoli, 39, a businesswoman from Lagos, is facing criminal prosecution and being sued after she said that this puree was too sweet. On September 17th, the active social media user, she must be a content creator like us, Mike, mm -hmm. shared her critique of the sauce alongside a photo of an open can of the Arisco Foods product and asked her following to share their opinions, CNN reports. One commenter said, stop spoiling my brother's product. If you don't like it, use another one, then bring it to social media or call the customer service. Okoli responded, help me advise your brother to stop killing people with this product. Yesterday was my first time of using it, and it's pure sugar. And that was enough, bro. A week later, on September 24th, she was arrested. Will she attended church? She was at church. They came and arrested her from church and told CNN she was locked in a leaky police cell. There were no seats, so I stood through till the next day, she said. My legs were inside the water that came in from the leaking roof. Sometimes I squatted to reduce the pressure on my legs. I was thinking about my children who were at home. I was talking to myself. I would think, I would pray, I was messed up, she said. Now, this they did to a pregnant woman. Now, stand by for a second, real quick. Got to give another shout out to Drift. He just sent $50 on Cash App. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that is it. Awesome, Drift. Thank you so much uh, for Mike. It's awesome, man. Uh, the mother of the three was charged with conspiring with two individuals with the intention of instigating people against the Risco's Foods Limited. She was charged with the intention of instigating people against the Risco Foods Limited. This is a charge. Conspiring. Wow. Con so uh, they can actually charge. They can, and they did. The following day, Miss uh, Kola was flown to the Nigerian capital of Abuja and held at uh, a police station before being released or administrative uh, on administrative bill a day later. So I guess the capital is Abuja. I always thought it was uh, Lagos, but anyway, uh, she was also charged with instigating a Rico Foods Limited, knowing the said information to be false. So their slander there is a, uh, not a uh, administrative crime. It's a uh, not, not, it's not uh, where you sue somebody. It's where you put somebody in jail, man. What if you could be put in jail for slander here? You know what I mean? A crime that could end up with her going to prison for three years and a fine of 7 million Naira, which is $3,950. She has also filed. Uh, she has also filed two countersuits against the police and Arisco, and her legal team have coined the battle David versus Goliath. Miss Akoli uh, was, who is pregnant with her fourth child, refused to publicly apologize to Arisco, which was a condition of her bail. You know, what if that was a condition of bail here? A thousand dollars plus a public apology. Like we don't do that. No, there's no public apologies needed. Uh -huh. Yeah, that over there there is. She she uh she's so she uh So how can you what they're not allowed to to say shit about any private company or any company that makes something? What? Uh, they're not allowed to have an opinion? Not in this case. <laughs> Miss O'Keely was pregnant, Fort Chow refused to publicly apologize, which was a condition of her bail since her lawyer told the news outlet she would be apologizing under duress. 
If she apologizes, it won't be real, he says. Mm -hmm. He's apologizing under duress. In an explosive interview, Arisco CEO, Eric Yumifoa, uh, that's not saying it right, Yumifoa, something like that, he told broadcasters that he would rather die than allow someone to tarnish my image I worked 40 years to grow. All they said was your stuff was too sweet. Isn't that crazy? Dude, I, I, I still don't understand how that's even okay. Like, how is that a law where they can get you like that? That's incredible. It is. And to force you to apologize? Yes. Publicly? Uh-huh. Over some tomatoes paste. Over it being too sweet, in your opinion. Stop the cap. And the conspiracy of asking other people to speak up about their experience with it. And you want and you want to go to Nigeria still? Yeah, no, I never had that problem in Nigeria. <laughs> well, you yeah, in the eighties. There was no no Facebook. It's fucking forty years ago, homie. Yeah. A lot of shit changes in forty years. It it, it changed. Well, I, one of the reasons we left is because it changed before our eyes. They had I'm sure a, of that. civil wars and stuff going on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Rough. Yeah. All the way around rough. Yeah. Damn, man. Crazy. Crazy I hope stories. That, I hope that she does better. Uh, and Puff Daddy seems to still be. <laughs> the media is on his ass. Oh, my gosh, man. This they're, lady right here, on Nina him. Ray, says she had a horrific experience with him. And to avoid him at all costs. But when I read in the story, I couldn't see what the horrific experience was. Tanika Ray, a TV host and one-time backup singer for Sean Diddy Combs, uh, said she had a horrific experience with the rapper that caused her to avoid him. Ray wrote in a social media post that she knew to avoid him at all costs. I just knew to avoid him at all costs. Yes, I danced for him and kept my space. I interviewed him uh, for his projects and kept my space. Nothing is ha nothing that is happening is surprising, she wrote. But I don't see how that's a horrific experience. She just kept <laughs> her face. A lawsuit filed in November has accused Diddy of running a sex trafficking operation, of hiding hidden cameras in his home, uh, of forcing the plaintiff music producer Ron Jones into having sex with sex workers, among other claims. I don't know how you could force me to have sex with sex workers. Like, you're a man. I was forced. <laughs> I was forced. Just shoot me now. Uh, uh, but after you make me take these four blondes and two brunettes and these... Now my life is ruined. These three uh, models from Kenya. <laughs> if they're going to be a PD, they're not going to be ugly. Stop the cap. That's right. They're going to have the best sex workers money can buy. Isn't he? Yeah. There are sex workers, and then there are sex workers that go to P. Diddy's house. Those are sex workers, my man. Oh, real, real workers on the next caliber level. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine no hoochies in there. Honestly, keep me away from, from all that nonsense, though. That's a bunch of trouble waiting. Well, and look, is, look what happened to him. It has proven to be a bunch of trouble waiting. Mm-hmm. But I'm just talking about, they forced me to have sex. What they, I mean, what did he do? <laughs> did he pick you up and put you on? I mean. <laughs> Sit down. Boom. <laughs> Go over there and have sex. Okay. <laughs> just force me. <laughs> I just, Mike, help me. Uh, I can't. I, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to allow you the floor on this one. <laughs> I'm a biker, man. I, you're just I'm not, like, you're not a choir boy. I get you. I'm a biker, not a choir boy, but. They just force you? Can they really? Are you, I, uh, I'm, sh and P did it. It's not like he's tough. Right. That part. He's not like he's the biggest. He's, he's not, he's not, uh, who was that guy? Suge Knight. He's not Suge Knight. Now Suge Knight could force you to have sex with a sex worker. That's different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, he forced, uh, 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 who's that guy? Vanilla Ice. He forced him to sign over a whole record to him. Really? 
held him the the story is he held him by his feet upside down over a balcony, you know, a thousand feet above the ground. When did that happen? Oh, way back there in the Shook Knight days. Yeah, mm-hmm. look it up. It I will. That's crazy. And, and that's the story of Vanilla Ice signed over the Masters and uh, turned out to make more money than he than any of them guys combined. No shit. Yeah, you can have these Masters. I think he went into real estate or something. This, this wow. Vanilla Ice guy. Yeah. Done well for himself. That's incredible. So anyway, federal agent says, you know, search Diddy's L.A. and Miami homes on Monday and arrested his alleged mule, Brendan Paul, who was caught allegedly carrying cocaine onto Diddy's private plane. Why couldn't that just be a guy carrying cocaine for his own pleasure? Uh, but if he's going on Diddy's plane, it's he's Diddy's mule. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, very. Like, he couldn't just be... I, I had some dope and... And I got caught with it. And that's it? And that's it? Mm-hmm. No, you were going on Diddy's plane, so you must be Diddy's mule. You're Diddy's mule, man. Yep. You mule. You, you mule. mule. You mule. You mule. <laughs> you mule. <laughs> uh, Combs is strongly denied. But anyway, uh, you don't know this, uh, but not only did Tanika Ray have something to say about it, but uh, they have some sort of tape uh, or something where they're saying... That uh, I have to find that, but Joseph uh, really did. He alleged uh, allegedly had held a woman over a balcony. Did wow. he? I didn't know that. Uh, that is, it's not surprising. None of this shit is surprising to me anymore. I mean, once this guy got in the freaking spotlight like three days ago, now all this shit's unfolding. Yeah, I, I'm not even surprised anymore. <sighs> it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. Yep. Yeah. I I just I didn't know Diddy held anybody over over a, a a woman over a balcony. Is does he look strong enough to do that? I I have no idea, dude. I I don't know if he could. Maybe Meanwhile, it's a hundred pound little girl, you know. Meanwhile, the school debate. Let's do the school debate. Let's let this be our last story out. All right. This guy in the school debate. So, Scott Smith had a child who was sexually assaulted at school by a um, transgender student. Oh, shit. Yeah, so a boy who identified as a girl sexually assaulted his daughter Mm. and, and then he wanted to go to the school board and complain or something. And the school board decided that they would not let parents talk or something. And so here's a video of what happened to him as he tried to express his rage about certain policies. Check this out. This is this is crazy. Whoa. Before we remember the shocking scene, it was our next guest being arrested during a school board meeting in Loudoun County, Virginia, after his daughter was sexually assaulted at school by a transgender student in the girls' bathroom. Well, now the school board has decided to essentially silence debate during those meetings by turning off the live stream cameras while members of the public are speaking. Of course. Scott Smith joins mm-hmm. us. Thank you so much for being here. Looking back at the video, I I just wonder if there hadn't been video of that incident, you know, where you would be today, because it would have been a, he said, she said, there was no way for Americans to look at that and say, this is wrong. This father was treated terribly in this instance. And it actually led, I believe to the governor, a pardon there in Virginia, governor Youngkin. Do you think the video was an important part of getting justice here? That video was very important uh, for us to get justice. However, we're still trying to get justice. Um, you know, I believe that, you know, looking back at it, you know, God made that happen. And, you know, here we are today. But something new has happened this year, you know, with with Loudoun County is, is you know, a new wave of parents have showed up. You know, when they decided to turn off the cameras, it was because the Hindu and Muslim community, they showed up. And that's that's a new wave of parents. And I think it freaked out the school board to the point where, you know, they cannot allow another viral moment like mine to go across the land 
and continue to wake up parents, you know, to say no to this. Why do you think that those parents in particular would create a viral moment? Because they came to they came to stand up and speak out against policy 8040. You know, it's it's against their religions and they're they're very upset about it. The Hindu and Muslims, they 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 don't like this. What is that? Poli- and, uh, uh, just you know, remind everybody here peacefully. what that policy is. Policy 8040 is the policy that they were trying to pass three years ago when they covered up the rape of my daughter. And that's the policy to let boys and girls go into whatever bathroom that they identify with. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is any validity to some of them saying that they think it's important to not have it? Let's just listen to one of them. This is a school board member, April Chandler. This is what she said. I want our neighborhood schools to be excellent. And I want the division out of the news. For that reason, I will not support any efforts to turn the cameras back on. Turning the cameras back on now only invites and undermines the work of the school board. Bullshit. Do you think there's any validity to her point of view? No, absolutely not. I mean, we have nine new school board members this year, and every one of them campaigned on transparency and less division. And this is absolutely the opposite of what they all campaigned on. You know, they've let us down. They they haven't done what they've said. And they're just trying to shut us out. They're trying to shut moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas out of the public spotlight to be able to speak out against the radical policies. What do you think will ultimately happen here? Is there enough? Do you feel like there's enough outcry in the community to have more transparency and to leave the cameras on? Well, you know, it's funny you ask that because, you know, our governor, Governor Yunkin, you know, he made a, mo- a you know, a model policy that they're supposed to be, you know, implementing and they're not. And, you know, what good is, uh, you know, governor's policy that's unenforceable? So, you know, yeah, I think that there's enough parents to show up, you know, to to keep this in the spotlight. Um, but, you know, I I ask our governor, you know, he made a policy. Why isn't it being enforced? And I just have one last question for you. How, how are you and your family doing today? Well, I appreciate you asking. That's the most important. You know, we're surviving. We're in the middle of, you know, getting into some, you know, trials of uh, our lawsuits. We've got a Title IX federal lawsuit that's moving its way through court. We expect wow. to do a trial by late summer. Okay. Um, you know, we're looking forward to our day in justice and finally being able to hold some people accountable. But we've got a lot ahead of us. We've got a big fight ahead of us. And, you know, it consumes a lot of our life. You know, we, we look forward to one day being able to put this behind okay. us. But at right now, we're still in the middle of a battle yeah. of our life. Yeah. Terrible. Tested indeed. Scott Smith, thank you. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> Man, what did you think about that, man? It's upsetting. It's upsetting. That's it's terrible. I mean, there's there's so many complicated parts to this. There's not only the um, the essay, the the sexual assault there, but there's you know then the father's getting attacked in the freaking court. You know what I mean? Like that. That's crazy. Yeah. Or, well, or uh, the, uh, the school in the, board or whatever. In the school board. Yeah. Yeah, the but this board is. That's what's ridiculous. And then that they want to shut down the cameras and then not run it anymore. What? Because you want to protect yourselves, not because you want um, the betterment for the school. Or not the because school you want to hear the people that are paying the salaries and the taxes and the people that have their children in the school. That's why I called it. I said bullshit. You know what I mean? Like they should definitely be turning those cameras back on. You shouldn't be scared. School boards have turned into something else, man. These people. I'm glad my parents didn't have this. This this crap to go. They had their their issues that they had to deal with. School boards and th- these people run these school boards have become so entitled um, yeah. that they can make like they run the whole place. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right. Decisions for your children, and they use courts and stuff like that to keep parents out of the whole men- menage of the and, and how evil of that to be. You know what I mean? To yeah. shut up the parents? What do you mean? That's where they're supposed to speak. I don't get it. So only the authorities can speak. Shut up. Man. 
Yeah, but he did get pardoned by the governor. I'm sure they put all kinds of uh, charges on him. Oh, I'm sure of that. And he got he got pardoned. The governor pardoned him. But um, oh my God, Terrible. isn't that crazy? What a string of freaking stories here, dude. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, that's been an hour and a half of us of stories. Yeah. Man, that was thick. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, man. Crazy. Lots of ads. Yep. You guys got anyway. lots of them? That sucks. Uh, anyway, Mike, take us out of here, man. All right. Much love and respect to everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in and hanging out with us today. We had um, some crazy stories going on today. So um, I appreciate every single one of you guys for that donated, that everyone's here that's live right now uh, in the chat. We can't do this show without you guys. So we are heavily supported by you guys, not only for the view and the likes and the shares and all that stuff, but including you guys, your guys' generous donations. It keeps us afloat. Um, also we're still putting out, we're going to keep putting it out until we get it done is that we are actively looking for three major sponsors and some ad space spots for the YouTube channel as well. Um, please, you know, follow us on our social medias. Mine's right down there below at ball valve TV on all platforms. And then black dragon is on black dragon biker TV on all platforms. And, um, please follow us on our TikTok, our Instagram. That's where we go live stuff like that. Here is um, the cash app for donations and PayPal for, for uh, Black Dragon as well. And yeah, much love and respect to everybody. Hope to see you guys here in, a, I guess, 24 hours. See ya. And we do go live on TikTok every uh, couple of days. Uh, we're trying to get to where we'll be on there live every day, but uh, we are doing a lot of work. I hope you guys like the the show as it has developed, um, keep those ideas coming in and uh, keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, we had the most people on today that we've had in a long time. So uh, our, we, we keep building, the numbers keep building and going up. And we're very thankful for that. I just hit oh, over 170,000 Yes, you did, by the way. I meant to say something about that. I meant to, and thank you for reminding me. Yes, I did see that BD hit 170,000 thousand subscribers yeah. man congratulations I, to you i can't i can i cannot i cannot believe it um but uh yeah we hit um you know we're getting close to two hundred thousand damn subscribers that's crazy uh so yeah indian motorcycle should sponsor me uh i guess maybe i need to ask them so uh um uh the outlaw preacher. I remember when you had like ten thousand. If you knew me when I had ten thousand subscribers, uh, outlaw preacher, you, uh, you've been with me for you. You were with me when I was walking through the woods. So I can remember. I only ever wanted to get to ten thousand subscribers. I, I, ten thousand was the. It took me one year to get three thousand subscribers. So ten thousand was the number that I ever only ever wanted to reach and then after a while it was a hundred thousand and i knew i was never going to reach that and then now it's 170 jesus and i know guys that have a million and five and all that are looking at me laughing but bro 170,000 subscribers it's unbelievable it's unbelievable uh and i i thank mike ball for all of his uh contributions uh to my show and so many others uh the diamond effect he's on uh, he helped uh, Hollywood with his channel forever. He helped the very popular uh, Demons Row get up and rolling, and uh, was uh, uh, part and parcel to that. And 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 st uh, still, you know, uh, that's part of his legacy as well. So all of the uh, big channels, uh, it's really crazy. Mike has worked on them all, I believe. Uh, Danny Delo, uh, he also worked with them uh, for a while. That guy that was up, um, Marcos. Uh, he worked with him, so uh, he's come over and, and brought his talents over here to help me out, along with my crew, uh, 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 K. Wayne, the gatekeeper, and, uh, of course, uh, Goose, my club brother, and uh, also uh, my executive producer, Merlin. So uh, he's come over here and brought a hell of a lot of talent, so I absolutely appreciate 
him for everything he's done. Hey, listen, you guys, you can catch us Monday through Friday. My newest book is The Social Club's Bible. The Social Club's Bible is about social clubs on the biker set and how they deal with uh, uh, women's social clubs and how to deal and, and learn on the biker set. Uh, Ghost Eagle was here when uh, I was t- first getting started. Ghost Eagle is part of my board of regents uh, that I had for the longest time uh, helping me with my show. You guys have done so much for me. And like Mike Ball's in the background showing you guys the Social Club's Bible. See this kind of stuff. This is the growth that has come. And all of these people came to me as subscribers of my show. You guys have become like family to me. The, these the, uh, Ghost Eagle, K Wayne, uh, and then you guys that are on every single day. Uh, um, just you guys call me if I'm late. Uh, you, you call me if I don't show up for a day or something. Check on me if I'm sick. Check on my dogs. You guys have become my family. Biker News Canada has been hanging out with us tough. SNS contracting since like the beginning. Uh, Dwayne Martin. <laughs> I just I could just go down the list and. Uh, Yip and Yah, uh, uh, Yahoy, uh, all these folks, man. I, I see all these names that flash by, and I see these people every day. And Mike and I, we thank you so much. We thank you for the donations. We thank you for uh, subscribing. If you guys can uh, can can uh, go over to our Instagram or our uh, TikTok and subscribe to our Instagram TikTok lives, it'll help the channel. Uh, and anything that you guys can do, like sharing and liking and subscribing, that just would absolutely uh, continue to boost the channel. So we're we're growing. For all the new people that have come on, welcome to the family. 170,000 subscribers uh, just on this platform alone. Almost 90,000 subscribers on TikTok and uh, just went over... 15,600 subscribers on, uh, on, on Instagram and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, 50, 60,000 subscribers on uh, Facebook. So, hey, man, we're growing. So thank you guys so much. Hey, we're out of here. I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Love to hear your two cents in the comment section below. Mike Ball and I say thanks for tuning in and get skinny. This button. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. Get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from BlackDragonsGear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself for service to the motorcycle club nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get the book. Thank you.
Like and share. Like and share. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.